All right, whatever All right, you want on. is your controls. I have the controls. Here's your controls. All right, so for confined area landing, what I've always been teaching is 500 feet AGL minimum okay. as you make your three circles. And we got a spot picked out over here that's kind of oblong. So of course you're always making your decision. You want to land in, you can, this is a perfect example where do we want to go into the wind and have a shorter stretch or do we want to do crosswind and use have more of an area. Okay. So I'm kind of thinking about that as we go around. So the thing that I've seen over the years is when you're teaching find area landings, people want to get slow. Right now I'm going too fast. So I'm going to slow it down right now. So I do three times around, minimum of 60. And of course, we're keeping 60 just in case the engine quits. We're not behind the game. Keeping 500 AGL the whole time we're looking in for, of course, what's the surface like? Size, surface, shape, slope, looking for towers, looking for wires. And then I'm always thinking about path in and path out. Where am I going to go if something happens on the way in? And even more importantly, I think, is once you get down in the hole, sometimes you forget what's on the other side when you're going to come out. So making a mental note on the way in, where am I going to go if something goes wrong? On, when I come out of the hole, what am I, where am I going to go if something goes wrong? So that's one, about one time around. We'll go around two more times. And now I'm thinking about the wind and whether I want to go across to what I feel is more into the wind or whether I want to go kind of with a crosswind. So I'm looking outside. I got 70, so that's good. I've got 500 AGL. And the other trick that people, a lot of times when you're making these circles, you find yourself either creeping up on your spot or getting way away from it because you're thinking about the wind as you're going around. You know, you're adjusting those circles. So it looks to me, I think the wind's this direction. Would you agree? Uh, yeah. So I think going using the long ways, I think it's going to work. Yeah, based on that, based on that smoke I see over there. Yeah. So I'm looking out thinking, thinking, okay, I'm going to come up with kind of a downwind base and final for when I make my approach in. So again, keeping three circles, keeping a minimum of 60. People have a hesitant stick, hesitant or up. People have a tendency to get too slow. So this is time around number two. I know the wind, we th believe the wind's that direction due to the smoke. So when I look across, I can see kind of a little creek over there. That's gonna be kind of my downwind. And I can see a road back there that I'm gonna use for a base and a final. So I've kind of got my plan. I know what my downwind, my base and final's gonna be. And of course, as we start our approach in there, we're verifying everything that we saw at the higher altitude. Okay. And if we see anything that we don't like, fly away. I mean, we don't, nothing says we have to land there. And even from the time I spent in EMS, if we didn't like a landing spot, we didn't land there. And if it didn't matter if it was an accident scene, and the fire department set you up a spot, and they pick what they think is the best, but then you'll see a danger from above. If you don't like it, you don't land there. You can always find somewhere else. And they were always understanding when you say, we see your spot, but we've got a wire, or we've got an antenna or something. You know, there's a Walmart parking lot over there. We're going to go over there and land. They were always understanding. So the biggest thing is, you know, if it, if you don't like it, don't do it. Exactly. If you find something that doesn't seem right, I just abandon it. And then the go around. You know, in normal training, we try to. I try to do a go around every single time I do a lesson with somebody. At least an hour lesson. I want to do it, get them to go around at least one time. If you teach people to go around, they'll do it. If you don't constantly do it, then it won't be in their thought process, and they'll end up shooting a bad approach and getting themselves into trouble because they could, should have just went around. Gotcha. And even in EMS, they wanted us to go around. It didn't matter what's going on on the ground. It didn't matter about a patient. Not to be unfeeling, but the important thing is you land the helicopter safely. It doesn't matter what's going on in the back or what's going on on the ground. It's about getting the helicopter on the ground safely. So, you know what? I totally screwed that up. The wind's over there, so my downwind base and final is the wrong direction. So, I'm just gonna go around and make my downwind over there and a base and final right into our spot. So, hey, I'm not scared to admit I just goofed. Luckily, I caught it. 
instead of making a downwind approach into a confined area, that would be bad. That would be really bad. Yes. All right. So I see a fence line over there for my downwind. I see a spot where I want to turn by a tree and some water to make my base, and that'll take us right in to our spot. Land number two, your traffic to the mile and a half final centurion. Okay, Glen land number two, two, three, zero, one, two, nine, zero. All right, 500 AGL, got 70 on the airspeed. Right now on my downwind. So as we approach it, again, we're gonna be looking, does it look the same on our approach as it did when we were up here? And as we kind of descend and start the basin final, we're just looking for anything that might not look right. like it did at 500 AGL. I wanna start my approach at 60. Gonna do a steep approach. Base tower, Ocker, East 01, Romeo, Mike, visual. Going to left base. East 01, Romeo, Mike, Roger, thanks. If you would continue on that heading, start showing us approach speed, please. Right, Get a little slow there. there. Approach speed, 01, Romeo, Mike. Get your 5 uniform, Mike, make a left 360, please. Left 360, please, get 5 uniform, Mike. 3129, Cherry, is sort of landing on with 23. Did we totally misjudge the wind? What's that? I like, did we totally misjudge the wind? No, I don't think so. No. Now we're live again. All right, so I'm approaching my spot. And Asia, one moment, Mike, turn left now, heading up 270, please. 270, heading on Romeo, Mike. As you roll out on that heading, you'll see traffic, but he's he's breaking out from the final approach course. We'll be looking on Romeo, Mike. So you can actually continue to turn to the numbers of runway 23, your third land, Asia, one Romeo, Mike. Well, uh, All right, so from here on in, I'm going to keep it at 200 feet per minute or less. And keep us out of vortex ring state, because there's our 30. As we get below 30, we're going to keep it below 200. Nice and slow. We're looking outside, looking for trees, wires, obstructions, anything that just doesn't look right. Keep it under that 200 feet per minute. Nice and slow. We can still fly away if something transpires we don't like. About 100 feet per minute. Coming down nice and slow. Being caught, or being, uh, thinking about, it's a little damp with some tall weeds. We want to make sure we're going to have enough hover power. We've got enough room. We can fly away if we feel like we're pulling too much power. And there we go. Very nice. Very nice. Tell clear on the right. Now I'm going to go ahead and move back this direction a little bit, just because we have this benefit of this being kind of an oblong spot. Keeping it under the limitation. This way we can kind of do that mix of altitude and airspeed to get out of our hole. Tail clear on the right. And then of course a really good hover pre-takeoff check. Warning caution lights are out, gauges in the green, we've still got fuel. Since we're gonna be doing a max takeoff, we wanna make sure that Everything's good and ready to go, and it's going to be able to deliver the power that we want. So I'm just going to start gently moving it forward, raising some collective. we got lots of time, and we have time to even abandon it if we decided we were going to over pull the power, but it doesn't like we're going to have any problem whatsoever. Coming up nice and slow. We could still abandon if we needed to, but everything's looking good. Airspeed's alive. 40-knot attitude. Nice climb out up over the trees. And away we go. Very nice. I'll give you the controls back. All right, I have controls. That wasn't my best ever. But, but I totally good. screwed that up. But at least I finally, but I caught myself. Wait. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm going to set myself to do a downwind base and final downwind. Going in the wrong damn direction. But it was good, though. That's my thought process. Probably not a lot different from what you've been taught, I don't suppose. Yeah. All right, so we're, I know where we're at, so what I'll do, I, I usually like to set myself up, for when, especially when they're busy, put myself in a position, so all he says, go straight to the, straight to the arrow, Ryan. I don't blame you. So, I don't blame you one bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bypass these, uh, 734, uh, Bravo X-ray, uh, go ahead and start the base here. Right so, you guys use the term antenna farm? Yeah. I was just telling Gloria about that the other day. I'm like, see all those towers? Uh, we call those the tenna farm. <laughs> She's like, really? I go, yeah. Uh, my brother lives out here somewhere. <laughs>